Okay, so to get started for this community call, um, the first thing that we want to talk about as a team is looking at our uh, mobile UI. Um, we mentioned last week that we did like a Reddit post where we got a ton of visitors, but they didn't necessarily convert into a ton of active users. So um, we've been looking at ways to try and make the UI easier to use. And I'm not sure if you all had had an opportunity to like look through things, but just wanted to quickly provide a forum if anybody had like any specific changes that they wanted to see within the like mobile site. Is there any, and do you have do you guys think there is any place at all on the right side on, on of the mobile version to introduce like the top comments or something or do you think it's pretty much should be entirely dedicated to individual posts which um are you talking about the right side of mobile or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mobile mobile the right side in mobile i'm on a uh are you talking about in a paper page not in the paper page but on the trending page the hubs page uh yeah i don't know like in mobile like how we can fit that in um yeah like there is uh not enough room as far as uh i can at least visually see but if you have any ideas yeah definitely let me know um, um, what, what about if you extend the my hub section, the all section? What if you introduce another section that's just going to be comments? Yeah, I, I was thinking about like uh, top. Are you talking about like uh, just basically taking the sidebar from the desktop version and just like showing it, making making people aware that such a thing exists in mobile version? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you wouldn't want to squish it into the you know the the main trending page, but if you could have like an alternate tab, right? So maybe papers, posts, comments, or something like that. You know. Yeah, I'll definitely give it a shot. Like what I'm thinking about at the very least, we should do is on a paper, each paper, we should put like uh, an indicator on like how many comments the paper have. And I know Anton, you brought it up like a while back. And I agree with you that the avatars that we have at the moment don't really do much, but like seeing like, oh, this paper is like 10 comments, great. Makes me want to click on it. Um, yeah, but I'll think about the discussion thing, see if there is some real estate we can use as well. Okay, uh, yeah, I like your idea with, uh, you know, current uh, number of comments. I wonder if you'll eventually introduce different types of comments, like a question or something like that. And you would be like, oh, five unanswered questions in this paper or something like that. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. So yeah, we're definitely thinking about introducing questions in general, which we can link hypotheses and papers to. But uh, a comment that is a question, I like that. And I know we talked about it a while back too, you brought it up. I like having a drop down or something where you can select the type of comment. Yeah, um, I like that idea actually quite a bit. So kind of building off that feedback and then get back to mobile in a second. But i um, curious if you all use the My Hub section and what value you think that has kind of in its current iteration. Do you mean the hubs section itself or the my hubs as in all new papers that are filtered by just hubs that I subscribe to? Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking maybe on mobile we could, if uh, we, we thought that my hubs is not exactly as good as it could be. So I wonder if on mobile, if we just got rid of the my hubs tab, had the default be all, and then replace that tab with like a comments tab to just like mm. get rid of the my hubs concept on mobile. Uh, I don't, uh, that, this might come back to you in the future, right? Because eventually it, it's like it, you definitely need it. Like one day you'll need it 100% because uh, just mm -hmm. otherwise it would be an overwhelming mess. People can't read. Uh, whether you need it right now, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm thinking in general, what do you guys, um, me and Pat were chatting a little bit. We're thinking, yeah, totally in the future, 
my house is going to be like really big because we're going to have like a bunch of personalized content in there at the moment on both actually desktop and mobile do you guys agree that we should just default the user to the all page where you can just see everything i know anton you made a comment that you don't really use my hubs personally myself i don't use it but like just wanted to get a consensus here if you guys use it please let us know like i actually want to know if uh, anyone is using it i don't use it at all as well uh I think there's too little traction on the hubs I like, so uh, always click on the all. But um, when you look at the mobile version, like when you scroll down, like um, you only, um, or like the my hubs and all disappear. Like I would, like if there's something else, like maybe two lines, you've got like the research hub logo and then the, the three line symbol of the menu and then maybe something uh, down as well and then you can scroll down like in uh, you can block the titles like in, you do in Excel yeah, yeah make it like sticky you mean like um... yeah make it kind of sticky because now you can scroll but then like yeah you have to have the possibility to switch between more uh, than between leaderboard and live and yeah, so you're thinking, um, I'm just going to spend another minute on it. So you can actually access all that content from the hamburger button, right? Do you guys, I uh, think that maybe if there is like important content such as like hubs and stuff like that, we should surface it externally from it. Um, so like uh, with that being said, if there is like, one or two additional like important components that are really important to you that you would want to like new visitors of research hub to see at the glance what what would they be i know comments is one thing right we talked about that is there anything else uh, that's like oh everyone should know about this thing when they come to research hub Well, anything trending, the trending papers, trending hubs, trending comments. I don't think uh, here maybe even the topic may be less important than the traction, right? So even if it's not your specialty, but you see all of a sudden everyone is disc discussing, I don't know, corals or something like that. And you're like, oh, why, why is this Why is this popular? I should, I should get, check it out. Mm -hmm. But... I just wanted to say that maybe I initially dis misunderstood uh, what you meant by my hubs. I, I, I thought the whole the page itself where you select the hubs, this one I don't like. The my hubs itself as a filter, I absolutely love. Not only I love it, I want it to be expanded like into uh, not even my hubs, but bundles. Like I can have a bundle for psychology, psychiatry, neuroscience. I want to have a bundle for like GPU engineer and lasers and stuff like that. And I don't want them to overlap. So maybe an unpopular opinion, but I don't know. So, so you're saying that you actually love your personalized like hubs list and you want more optimization around that? Yeah, I would like to have multiple like, like, like bundles I could click, right? Right now I browse through this subset of my interests and then I would like to browse through this subset of interests. I think yeah. project management tools have those as like quick filters. Mm -hmm. Basically, create a filter that you can easily just uh, go to. Like a saved filter, yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, so you're saying like when you say like uh, bundles, you mean like hub, selected hub, like psychology plus maybe something else. What would that something else be like uh, a top rated filter or something like that? Oh, no. And what, what I meant is just the combination of hubs. Like I could click my hubs, ta like say saved tab one for me. And that tab would just be free hub, psychology, psychiatry, neuroscience. And then my second hub or like, I don't know, combination of hubs would be, I don't know, engineer, molecular biology or something like that. Got it. Yeah, Reddit, Reddit has this feature. It's called like multi-reddits. 
Mm -hmm. basically specify the the hub or like the the redis you want to show up in the feed in the url and then you can like bookmark the page and when you click mm -hmm. bookmark it just shows that like all the posts from those reddits yeah that would be very sweet got it okay yeah, that makes sense actually um i like uh, yeah. I, I i get what you mean anton but like for me i'm not like uh really a power like i don't use research up that much but that would be too complicated for like as a new user having this feature on a mobile page i would be like ow oh, what's this i don't even know how research hub works normally and then i can categorize hubs into one super hub um i think it's a nice feature but maybe for advanced users um something that gets active once you get a certain reputation or whatever yeah for sure for sure i agree 100 percent. that's an advanced hidden feature yeah yeah at the very least i think uh last thing i'm going to say because i know joyce is like other things you want to talk about yeah i think it, a lot of our people come to our site they don't uh they're logged out users that have visited research up for the first time so I think we all probably agree that maybe they don't need to see everything. We need to have like a tunnel vision of what should they see? What can we sell them um, on? But okay, I got, I got some good ideas now. So thank you guys. You guys actually gave me some good input. Oh, a quick, a quick uh, last comment. Uh, do you mind, would it be possible to hide from the trending papers that do not have an abstract because they look they look suspicious on the main page. It's just one liner, right? No text. It almost feels I like- I did hide that. Oh, you did? Is that not hidden? Yeah. No, I see some. Sometimes Let me see. it's not hidden, but I think in all it's hidden most of the time. Is it? Oh, in my house. No, it, in all, I can see one that's not, oh wait. Yeah. Maybe you can send us a couple examples, Anton. Yeah, if you find that again, you should send that because we should have removed those. Yeah, I, I'm, ta I'm taking a screenshot right now. Apparently, it looks like there is no abstract on the trending page, but the inside there is an abstract. So a bug, probably. Nice. Yeah, it, it makes sense too on like how to refine my hubs. We've even like you mentioned this before, Anton, but like following papers, BioArchive just came out with a feature I think the last couple of days where you could do something similar. So yeah, like including like following certain users, following papers in my hubs, I think would be pretty worthwhile in the long term. So uh, moving on to what I think the, the meat of the community call should be is this idea of mod ownership. I mentioned it a little bit at the beginning, but the idea here is that we want to uh, give mods the ability to have like more control over what's going on in each hub. Um, in theory, we're thinking like there would be like and this is just one idea. We could literally do anything. And what uh, I want to do in this conversation is like just throw any ideas out there to start our like brainstorming internally. But um, one idea that Brian threw out was having like a like moderator board for each hub. So like the psychology hub could have like five users who are like highlighted at the top of the hub who are the moderators, and they're elected at every like certain you know time interval. And they have the ability to like curate the hub and like maintain the papers. Like Anton, you were saying in the community chat, like make sure they're abstracts, make sure like all the spam comments are deleted. And then uh, in return for doing this, um, there would be some kind of like monthly monthly RSC salary, and then maybe have like some other incentives tied to where if you are on like the moderator board of the psychology hub you earn more coins when there's more activity in your hub. So there's an incentive for you to go out and like recruit other people who are also in your field to like start having conversations and um, help to scale up communities in that way. So, so this could literally be anything. So if anybody has any ideas, like this very, very early stages starting to brainstorm how we could potentially like empower mods and give them more tokens for doing so. Uh, because I expect that there will be a huge disparity between different uh, hub sections. Uh, it is, I wouldn't recommend to uh, scale the reward proportionally to the hub size, to the hub's community size. Uh, that could also lead to some people being kind of envious of other moderators for moderating bigger hubs. So that, that could be a tricky one. 
Uh, other than that, probably just looking at the communities that have done it well somehow, whether it be Reddit or Stack Exchange, and seeing how they they rolled out moderated, moderating features and how they uh, ended up picking people is definitely a good cautionary tale and like just lesson in general. Uh, I know that the Stack Exchange has a bunch of uh, publicly open blog posts uh, that they wrote on how they were selecting people, what was the process, uh, where they publicly announced people and their profiles, why they were selecting them. So it has a bunch of information uh, on that, which is super useful. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. We'll definitely check that out. I know Reddit has like a ton of issues with like these power mods who like moderate all of the big subreddits. So I've never totally understood if that's just like it's hard to find people to do that much work or if there's something else going on. But yeah, absolutely. Like being very specific about why we're letting certain users have the power of being a moderator is pretty important. Yes, I would say that I would guess that uh, moderating Reddit communities and moderating state Stack Exchange communities is quite different. And also the aim of the quality of the posts that are being moderated is also different. Uh, on Reddit, you can definitely expect a, a lot more spam and just uh, comments that uh, don't have a lot of effort put into them. Uh, on Static Exchange, it evolved into a platform that uh, has its users just putting more time and effort. Uh, so it's, I think, very different type of moderation. Uh, it's not the same moderating some uh, programming tag, uh, tag on Stack Overflow uh, versus moderating some trolling community on Reddit. So. Do you think it would be okay if you, like, once you get a bigger community, you would uh, occasionally ask people to go through a survey? Like, how how like how tidy do you find this particular hub? Like, you know, no spammy comments, everything is formatted nicely, stuff like that, and that could be a measurement of moderators' involvement. Oh, I see. So you're saying like survey end users about the quality of each hub and then compensate moderators based on the like metrics within that survey? Yeah, to, I mean, to a reasonable extent, right? Because I, I'm guessing some uh, hubs might be more prone to unhealthy discussions, right? So if it's something, you know, really popular and people have strong opinions, like psychology, right? <laughs> I expect there will be a lot of dirt <laughs> in psychology hub i know that usually websites uh post small uh unobtrusive like uh questions as you're literally browsing a certain section and there's some small mm -hmm. pop-up that you see once in every hundred visits and it's basically just something to estimate uh nps score net promoter score uh just to gauge kind of the main sentiment around the specific uh, part of the platform. Uh, and yeah, it could definitely be used. Uh, but again, because I wouldn't say necessarily there is like one to one correlation between health of certain sub community versus how well of a job are moderators in that community doing their job. Um, because like, again, no matter what you do, certain communities are just successful. Oh my, sub yeah, not, cannot pronounce that, uh, are just easy to go wild and not be maintained like psychology. Uh, so again, it could lead to some dissatisfaction uh, in moderator community simply because they aren't able to control fully their own kind of niche. Do you think you'll be able to give a moderator an ability to like highlight certain comments? If I if I'm browsing, I found someone you know who who left a really thoughtful comment or something. Can I can I do some vanity visit, make it make it shiny, and make it send it to trendy and comment section or something like that? Awards RSC. I think we could definitely do that. That that to me falls totally within the purview of like like maintaining a hub. So I always think of like if you have a museum. You know, somebody has to do the hard work of like curating the pieces in the museum and making sure that they're in the right spots. And so that's like a lot of work. And in theory, like I think it kind of um, can sort of act as a metaphor for what mods are doing in hubs, 
where if you're like highlighting specific pieces of content that you think others should see, that definitely increases the value for like the random person who comes to visit. So yeah, totally. I think, I think we should definitely build something like that if we go in the mod ownership direction. And that could be a flag for your machine learning algorithms, right? So high quality content. Totally, totally. yeah, that's a great call. I'm not sure if that is a job for moderators or for some sort of role of curators. Uh, you could definitely combine them together. Uh, and it seems more than useful to be able to highlight certain uh, things. Uh, but initially, I would say those are two uh, separate jobs. Are you all familiar with um, Steemit? Have you, have you heard of this before? It's like a, a blockchain um, Reddit type of application. But one thing they do is if you upvote, like a, a, the, a portion of a given post rewards are given to the people who upvote it. Because in theory, curation is a task that when done well, you know, helps like create content or, or rises the best content to the top. So one thing we could do is say like you could invest RSC in a certain post and then you could earn like maybe 10% of the total like RSC that is then given to that comment in the future. Like you could say, hey, author, here's 15 RSC. I now get 10% of the future RSC earned by this post. It would be, you know, more complicated than that. But the idea here is to like reward people for curating or basically staking their RSC on content that they think will be valuable for others. Yes, that that if if a research hub ever becomes like a world power, that's because of stuff like this. You need to introduce more speculation. You need to be able like to gamble whether you think a certain post that's just been posted will go up or down. Stuff like that. You, you need to make RSC fun. So, so that's what Steemit did, and I, I think it's pretty. It was pretty powerful there. There were some, you know, um, bad incentives that came out of it, but no matter what we do, that will happen, and we'll have to continually iterate. But so, just to throw one idea out there, which we've talked about a little bit, is this concept of an RSC lottery. So, when you upvote a paper right now, that gives one RSC to whoever the submitter is. Um, the next version of this that we'd like to do is every time you upvote. The RSC is then put into like a lottery of sorts where 50% of the time it will go to the paper's authors. Say like 10% of the time it will go to the submitter. Um, maybe 20% of the time it'll go to commenters and then, you know, however many percents left. Like say 5% of the time it could go to curators, like early upvoters, and then another 5% of the time it could go to the mods of the hub that it's in. And the idea here is if you're a mod of a hub, the more upvotes that are like received by the papers in your hub, the more tokens you'll earn. So in theory, there's an incentive to make the papers as upvotable as possible. So having abstracts, make sure spam's not there. And then in addition, the mod also has an incentive to bring more people into their hub to then upvote their papers because they get like kind of a finder's fee on all the upvotes that happen in their hub. So that, that's just one idea, which has kind of gone along with this RSC lottery that we've been talking about for a pretty long time to have like a V2 reward structure. But yeah, curious um, your thoughts on that as just like a very early potential way to do things. Excellent yeah. idea, I think. I have to be honest, I think it's a terrible idea. Uh, <laughs> overall, uh, I'm actually somewhat terrified. Uh, and here's why. Uh, because that sounds much like I'm entering a casino that has a specific set of rules. And I have this uh, handbook how to uh, trick the system and earn uh, most of, of the tokens. Uh, and that sounds really terrifying. Instead of me focusing on outputting something good, I'm literally betting on things and seeing like, uh, oh, the comment earns me 50% chance to get more tokens and upvoting only 10% chance. I'm going to be spamming a lot of comments here uh, and basically betting on a paper. That shouldn't be the case because they're, um, it sounds way too much uh, like casino situation where you're literally trying to optimize your chances instead of focusing on the output. Uh, and I'm actually quite terrified by that. <laughs> 
it, but that's how that, that's literally how science works right when you plan a study you all you take all these considerations in your head right you and th that's like you're describing an ideal world right you should be focused on improving science or improving the communication but the reality is 99 percent of the people just just want to speculate in some way shape or form and dragon well, you're, you're totally good. right like like it would cause these bad behaviors for sure and I think what you said is very important because we could turn off a lot of people. I, I think the speculation gamifying things is very powerful. And if it's done in a way that still remains respectful to the mission, um, it could be useful. But that absolutely, I think um, these gamifications, whenever people are trying to like optimize their earnings, um, it normally is like perverse incentives and with that being said, I think one of the long term goals would be if we went in this direction. I don't know if we will, because it seems like trying, it seems like a bitter taste to put in people's mouths, but would be to always be optimizing. So that way, eventually, when someone's doing the math on how to game the system the best, the end result is a healthy behavior that helps the community. So, like the most selfish you could possibly be if, if we design it correctly is something that ends up benefiting everyone else. So that's, you know, easier said than done, but and it would take many iterations to get there, but that would be sort of the long-term goal. Yeah, and while I definitely agree that it could be useful and it could help push uh, more com community interactions and all of that, I think it is a kind of a slippery slope, right? And I know, uh, does Research Hub plan on having like game theory mathematician working full-time making sure that their system is not in a state that is too gamifiable. Uh, that sounds tricky. It, it needs a lot of caution. And uh, just because something is working to uh, create more engagement doesn't mean that Research Hub or any company uh, out there should be doing that specific thing uh, because we are still trying to incentivize a certain set of behaviors. And if we are still, uh, falling into some bad behavior from the past or even worse behavior uh, than we had in the past, then we can't kind of be uh, telling ourselves uh, everything is fine and patting ourselves on the back. Like it, it will be fine eventually uh, because things could spin out of control pretty easily. Yeah, totally agreed. And so I have to jump off now, but one last comment uh, to leave you with is this is kind of funny that you mentioned that. I just got off a call with, um, the um, nonprofit that the guy for who wrote Freakonomics, uh, who wants to help us out with. So um, they actually do have five economists who are going to work to suggest the game theory of RSC rewards. So we're, we're very lucky in that, like, there's some people who are in our community volunteering to help us think through these things in a way that's more complete than, you know, our team internally ever could. So I think I think the long term goal here would be to leverage all the people who are using Research Hub who are much smarter than us to suggest to us better ways to do things than we're currently doing them. But so, yeah, so, definitely utilize them and see what they are thinking. Yeah, and I'll come back and report back with their findings. But so I got to go. But thank you guys very much. I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> see ya. Yeah. Everyone's leaving. <laughs> okay. See ya. Bye.